We're going to use the computer to type a letter. Great! To do this, we'll need to use the mouse, the keyboard, and finally the printer. The cursor is moved until it touches the Word icon on the desktop. You can double-click the icon quickly using the left mouse. The Word program opens. It displays a blank page where you type your letter or note or story using the keyboard. When you hit the letters or numbers on the keyboard, they appear on the screen where the flashing line or cursor is located. Yes, the flashing line is also called a cursor. Watch while we type a quick note to the postman. When you want to start a new line, hit the Enter key. If you make a mistake and type the wrong letter or word, use the backspace key to erase the previous word. If the word you want to change is in the middle of your letter, use the cursor to select the word. If you click the left mouse button once near the word you want to change, the cursor jumps to that point. Double-click the button quickly when the cursor is on a word and the whole word will be selected. Triple-click it and the whole paragraph is highlighted. Unhighlight by single-clicking somewhere else on the page. You can remove a word you've highlighted by hitting the delete key. Or you can replace it by just typing a new word or sentence which will take the place of the word or words you highlighted. You can also click the right key on the mouse and then left click on cut to delete. A very useful action is called undelete. When you accidentally delete something and want it back, just click on this button and it'll reappear. The undelete button can be clicked a number of times to take you further back if you wish, but remember it undoes all your work from that point onwards. Let's look a little closer at the result when you right click. When we highlight a word and right click, we get this selection. If we now left click on any of these possibilities, we will get the indicated result. We can cut, copy, or change the font, alter the style of paragraph, or even look up similar words. Try experimenting with this in your own time to discover the use of these actions. When you look at a page in this program, you will notice the words and icons at the top. These are menus and shortcuts to certain functions or actions. The lines of icons are called toolbars. As you can see, the top row has a number of headings. File. Click on this to control things like opening, saving and printing your file and exiting the program. Edit. Contains the main editing commands like cut, copy and paste. View allows you to customize how your application appears on the screen. Tools, options, offers a few useful ways of doing things like checking spelling and even grammar, and lets you set up the way this application works. Help is where you can find help when things get confusing. The others on this toolbar have more advanced functions which you can explore once you have a little experience. Some of these functions are repeated as icons below this line. This makes them easier to access and use. Resting the mouse cursor on each icon tells you what it does. Before you start your letter or document, it's best to give it a name and save it in the folder. This is so you can easily locate your work next time you start the computer. Move the mouse cursor to the file heading at the top left of the screen. Click the left mouse button once, click on the Save As subheading. A box appears on the screen that allows you to save the letter wherever you want to. It can be placed on the desktop, as I said, or in the My Documents folder, the top drawer of the filing cabinet. Or you can create a new folder yourself by clicking this button here. Type a name for your folder and hit the Enter key. This is the equivalent of the second drawer of your filing cabinet. Now give your letter a name by typing in the rectangle at the bottom of the box. Hit enter again and the letter is saved in your new folder and the box disappears from the screen. When you type more of your letter, click on the save icon at the top of the screen. It's the square one, the third from the left. This saves the changes you've made to the same file as before. Do this often. This is very important because if the power fails or you turn off the computer before saving, all your unsaved typing will be deleted and you'll have to retype it. There are lots of things you can do with this word program to change the appearance of your typing. 
You can start by selecting a word or sentence with the cursor, click the left key and move the cursor across the words while still holding the key. Now let go the key. The word or sentence has been highlighted or selected. You can now use the buttons above the page to change the appearance of the words. For example, click on B to make it bold, U to underline it, or I to change the letter to italics. Change the font and size will also change the appearance of the words you have selected. You can even change their colour or highlight the words in colour. Another useful thing you can do is copy and paste text. This duplicates the text and drops it into this or another document where it's needed. If you just want to move it and not copy it, use the cut function and paste the new location. Don't forget to save any changes. Another set of three buttons you'll often see is up here in the right top corner. The first, the dash, minimizes the page like this. It hides from view and drops its link onto the taskbar here. Clicking this link reopens the document. The middle character, overlapping squares, reduces the size of the document like so, which lets you see what other programs or document is open. To increase the document size to full screen, click the middle button again. The final button has an X on it. This will close the document or program completely. Let's say at this stage you decided to take a break. So you left the writing for another day and closed down the computer after saving your work. Now you want to get back to it. After turning on the computer, you double click on the word processing icon. A fresh page greets you. Where's your work? You can reopen your file by clicking File and selecting from the file names at the bottom of the list. If your document is not there, open all folders by clicking Folder icon. Click on Local Disk in bracket C and navigate to the folder containing your document. When the file you want is found, double click the name and the file will open. Use the scroll bar at the right side of the screen to move down the page. You can also use the up and down arrows as well as the page up and page down to move through your work. On some mouses there is a scroll wheel. Rotating this will move the page up and down also. Well, once you have finished your letter it's time to print it onto a sheet of paper. Make sure the printer is turned on and attached to the printer socket of your computer. Click the printer icon once and your letter should print. You can also select the file heading and select print from the menu that appears. This allows you to choose the number of copies to print. It even lets you print just one page of a long document if that's what you want. To close the Word program, click on the small cross at the top right hand corner of the screen. If you haven't saved your work, the program will ask you if you want to do this. If you do, click Yes. If you don't, click No. The program then closes. Wow! All that just to type a letter. It does seem like a lot of work, but once you get used to it all, it'll become an easy task.